Welcome to Bite at a Time Books Behind the Story, where we answer the questions you have about your favorite classic authors. What inspired your favorite author to write their novels? What was going on in the world at the time? Follow along with us as we tell you what was happening in the world while your favorite authors wrote your favorite classics. My name is Brie Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. If you enjoy our show, be sure to follow us so you get all the new episodes. If you want to see exclusive behind the scenes of our show, join our Patreon. We would also love for you to drop us a rating on your favorite podcast platform and share our show with your friends. You can catch us on all the social medias at Bite at a Time Books. Our show is part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. If you would also like to hear a story by the author we are currently featuring, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Right now we are reading The Three Musketeers. Today we'll be talking about the person who inspired the character of D'Artagnan. Charles de Bats de Castlemore, also known as D'Artagnan and later Count D'Artagnan, 1611 to June 25, 1673, was a French musketeer who served Louis XIV as captain of the Musketeers of the Guard. He died at the Siege of Maastricht in the Franco-Dutch War. A fictionalized account of his life by Guétien de Corlitz de Sandras formed the basis for the D'Artagnan romances of Alexandre Dumas, Pierre, most famously including The Three Musketeers, 1844. The heavily fictionalized version of D'Artagnan featured in Dumas's works and their subsequent screen adaptations is now far more widely known than the real historical figure. D'Artagnan was born at the Chateau de Castlemore near Lupiac in southwestern France. His father Bertrand de Batz, Lord of Castlemore, was the son of a newly ennobled merchant, Arnaud de Batz, who purchased the Chateau de Castlemore. Charles de Batz went to Paris in the 1630s using the name of his mother, Francois de Montsecu d'Artagnan. D'Artagnan found a way to enter into the Musketeers in 1632 through the support of his uncle, Henri de Montsecu d'Artagnan, or perhaps thanks to the influence of Henri's friend, Monsieur de Treville, Jean Armand du Pierreur, Comte de Troyville. D'Artagnan joined the guards in the mid 1630s and served under Captain Dessessarts. The regiment saw much action in the early 1640s, taking part in sieges in Arras, arras sous la Lys, La Bessée, and Bampard in 1640-41, and Colicure and Perpignan in 1642. Whether or not D'Artagnan was personally involved is unclear, but it is likely he took part in some, if not all, of these sieges. While in the Musketeers, D'Artagnan sought the protection of the influential Cardinal Mazarin. France's principal minister since 1643. In 1646, the Musketeers' company was dissolved, but D'Artagnan continued to serve his protector, Mazarin. D'Artagnan had a career in espionage for Cardinal Mazarin in the years after the First Fronde. Due to D'Artagnan's faithful service during this period, Louis XIV entrusted him with many secret and delicate situations that required complete discretion. He followed Mazarin during his exile in 1651 in the face of the hostility of the aristocracy. In 1652, D'Artagnan was promoted to lieutenant in the Guards Frances and fought in the Battle of Stenay in 1654, as well as in sieges at Landrecies and saint Ghislain, then to captain in 1655. In 1658, he became a second lieutenant in the newly reformed Musketeers. This was a promotion, as the Musketeers were far more prestigious than the Garde Francaise. D'Artagnan was famous for his connection with the arrest of Nicolas Fouquet. Fouquet was Louis XIV's finance commissioner and aspired to take the place of Mazarin as the king's advisor. Fouquet was also a lover of grand architecture and employed the greatest architects and artisans in the building of his Chateau vaux le vicomte He celebrated the completion with a most extravagant feast at which every guest was given a horse. The king, however, felt upstaged by the grandeur of the home and event, and suspecting that such magnificence could only be explained through Fouquet's pilfering the royal treasury, three weeks later had D'Artagnan arrest Fouquet. To prevent his escape by bribery, D'Artagnan was assigned to guard him for four years until Fouquet was sentenced to life imprisonment. In 1667, D'Artagnan was promoted to captain-lieutenant of the Musketeers, The effective commander as the nominal captain was the king. 
As befitting his rank and position, he could be identified by his striking burgundy, white, and black livery, the colors of the commanding officer of the musketeers. Another of D'Artagnan's assignments was the governorship of Lille, which was won in battle by France in 1667. D'Artagnan was an unpopular governor and longed to return to battle. He found his chance when Louis XIV went to war with the Dutch Republic in the Franco-Dutch War. After being recalled to service, D'Artagnan was subsequently killed in battle on June 25, 1673, when a musket ball tore into his throat at the Siege of Maastricht. The French historian Odile Bordas believes that he was buried in St. Peter and Paul Church in Wolder, the Netherlands. In contrast, the archaeologist Wim Dinkman, curator of Maastricht, of which Wolder is a district, says that there is no historical or archaeological evidence of the claim. D'Artagnan married on March 5, 1659, and Charlotte Boyer de Chalency, Lady of St. Croix, born in 1624, daughter of Charles Boyer, Lord of Chanlacy, and St. Croix, and of Claude de Ryman, Lady of La Rochette, widow of Jean Eleanor de Damas. But quickly the couple did not live together anymore. D'Artagnan preferred the battlefields, and his wife left Paris and lived on his land of St. Croix, where she died on December 31, 1683. They had two children, Louis the Elder, born in 1660, and Louis the Younger, born on July 4, 1661, in chalon sur seine They both became military. The real D'Artagnan's life was used as the basis for Gatien de Coelitz de Sanders' novel Les Memoirs de Monsieur d'Artagnan. Alexandre Dumas in turn used Sandris's novel as the main source for his D'Artagnan romances, The Three Musketeers, Twenty Years After, and The Vicomte de Bragelonne, which cover D'Artagnan's career from his humble beginnings in Gascony to his death at Maastricht. Although Dumas knew that Sandris's version was heavily fictionalized, in the preface of The Three Musketeers, he affected to believe that the memoirs were real in order to make his novel more believable. D'Artagnan is initially portrayed by Dumas as a hot-headed youth who tries to engage the Count de Roquefort and the three musketeers, Athos, Porthos, and Aramis, in single combat. He quickly becomes friends with the musketeers and has a series of adventures which put him at odds with Cardinal Richelieu, then First Minister of France. In the end, Richelieu is impressed by D'Artagnan and makes him a lieutenant of the musketeers. This begins his long career of military service as detailed in the sequels. D'Artagnan's role among the musketeers is one of leadership. His skills and brains impress the musketeers greatly, but he is also regarded as a sort of protege given his youth and inexperience. Athos sees him not only as a best friend and fellow musketeer, but nearly as a son. At the end of the series, his death at the Siege of Maastricht is given an extra tragic twist. He is mortally wounded while reading the notice of his promotion to the highest military rank. Alexander Buskov published a novel, D'Artagnan, A Guard of the Cardinal. Some scholars believe aspects of D'Artagnan are drawn from the life and character of Dumas's mixed-raced father, General Thomas Alexandre Dumas. The incident when D'Artagnan challenges Porthos, Athos, and Aramis to duels on the same afternoon might be based on an incident in General Dumas's youth when he was insulted and their subsequent friendship on General Dumas's youthful companionship with fellow soldiers in the Queen's Dragoons. D'Artagnan's life was also an inspiration for many other characters in other works, including other novels, history books, and video games. His life is also portrayed in film and television, including adaptations of The Three Musketeers and The Man in the Iron Mask. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books behind the story today. While we answered some of the questions you have about one of your favorite classic authors, if you enjoy our show, be sure to follow us so you get all the new episodes. If you want to see exclusive behind the scenes of our show, join our Patreon. We would also love for you to drop us a rating on your favorite podcast platform and share our show with your friends. You can catch us on all the social medias at Bite at a Time Books. Also, be sure to check us on our website, www.biteatatimebooksbehindthestory.com. Our show is part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. If you would also like to hear a story by the author we are currently featuring, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Right now we are reading The Three Musketeers. Again, my name is Bree Carlisle. 
and I hope you come back next week when we answer more questions about one of your favorite classic authors.